trying to get your C code to run faster is kind of like performance tweaking your car. You buy premium gas, that fuel additive stuff, fatter tires, and maybe even some of those fancy exhaust pipes, all to get you down the road just a little bit faster. Those new rims probably didn't help performance very much, but shiny. <laughs> anyway, but those people down the street, yeah, those ones, they have an airplane. Yeah, your car is never going to get there. And your C code is never going to get past a certain point without hardware acceleration. Just like the airplane, though, taking advantage of hardware acceleration usually requires a bunch of specialized training. Most development teams don't have the budget to bring in a bunch of hardware designers or pilots to get them past that speed barrier. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Hardware acceleration of C-code usually demands a team with expertise in custom hardware design. But it doesn't have to be that way. In this episode, I'm chatting with Eric Ma of Xilinx about hardware acceleration of C code with no special training required. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about Xilinx's embedded solutions. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for joining me today. Happy to be here, Amelia. So, hardware acceleration in C, breaking performance barriers. Now, that sounds like a symphony of engineering. What kind of performance barriers are we breaking today, Eric? Let's break some bottlenecks common to embedded applications. Okay. Let me explain. We're seeing a large movement toward intelligent automation, demanding high-performance image processing, sensor fusion, and machine learning. We read in the news about successful deliveries from unmanned drones, and we see self-driving cars on our city streets. Embedded applications are becoming increasingly complex and require greater processing performance in order to accept more data, process all that data, and make an appropriate response. So Eric, how much processing performance do we really need? Well, that depends on the application. Let's take a look at an autonomous delivery drone as an example. Cool, okay. In order to navigate to its destination, the drone must see its surroundings to fly unimpeded and avoid obstacles. Right. This requires an array of sensors working in unison to provide at least a 180 degree field of view. Let's look at a pair of front facing image sensors. Okay. Each image must be pre-processed separately, taking up processing cycles. These images are merged into a 3D view, consuming even more processing cycles. For some applications, stereo vision from two cameras is sufficient. Okay. But for our drone, two additional bottom facing cameras are needed, effectively doubling processing requirements. Right. Data from all four inputs must be fused together to form a single data point for the drone's flight controller, allowing the controller to determine the best trajectory. So, the more sensors, the more processing performance we need. Right. And what's really challenging is that all this processing must happen in real time. Sure. When data is incoming at tens of frames per second, even a simple two-camera system requires a lot of processing performance to provide a timely response. So how do we get the processing performance we need? A faster processor, maybe? Ultimately, it depends on your application. Okay. There are multiple ways to achieve more processing performance, but none of them are easy. Great. <laughs> As a software engineer, I'd be inclined to increase my processor clock speed, maybe go up a speed grade. Okay. Another option would be to add more processing cores or upgrade to the latest and greatest multi-core processor. Those options seem fairly straightforward. They are, but they're not flawless. Processing capability would increase, but so would power consumption, heat, and cost. High-end processors can be too expensive for consumer applications. And for performance-hungry tasks like real-time stereo vision, they're not sufficient. So upgrading your microprocessor won't get the job done? Right. So let's take another angle. Let's try adding an accelerator. Okay. We can offload the compute-intensive routines to hardware, freeing your microprocessor from other tasks. In some cases, the addition of the accelerator means you can use a less expensive, lower power microprocessor to make your design more efficient. Okay. For example, you can go with an ASSP that's ideal for the application processing you need, but you get almost no design flexibility for product differentiation. Ah, okay. Your design would have the same capabilities as your competitors. Now, GPUs and FPGAs are very flexible, but come with software design complexity, potentially increasing product development time. Adding another chip also introduces bomb cost considerations 
and hardware design complexity to the equation. Sure. So a hardware accelerator can do the job, but adding a chip makes the product development more challenging. It sounds like an ideal world where you can put everything on one chip. Yes, that would be ideal. And single chip solutions are available. An integrated accelerator solves most multi-chip complications. And that's the approach we took with our SOCs. Cool, okay. We started with an ARM processor, the industry standard in embedded applications. Then we added an FPGA to the system for its flexibility and efficiency with compute intensive tasks. By integrating a microprocessor and FPGA, we addressed the hardware complexity and bomb cost concerns. You no longer need to devote engineering resources to optimizing a new PCB and its chip-to-chip -chip interactions. As a bonus, the ARM processor and FPGA are now connected by thousands of interconnects with better performance than a two-chip solution. Excellent. So an SOC minimizes hardware complexity and bomb cost. But the first thing an embedded designer is going to say is, what about the design tools, Eric? <laughs> Adding a hardware accelerator means product development requires additional engineering expertise, which directly affects design schedules and time to market. That's a fair question, and one that integration answers. We created a unified software development environment for both the ARM processor and the FPGA. Okay. With a single development platform, you're able to develop application software for both the processor and its accompanying accelerator. What you get is all the performance of a hardware accelerator without any of the challenges that come with it. All right, Eric, I hear you loud and clear, but this sounds a bit too good to be true. Well, let me show you how we did it. All right. We started by building a C, C++ software development kit. Xilinx SDK meets all the standard requirements for a software development kit. It's built on the popular Lenaro GCC compiler, the IDE is Eclipse-based and familiar to software engineers, and it runs on Windows and Linux. Excellent. Under the hood, Xilinx SDK is a single cockpit for all your development needs. You don't have to go in and out of different tools for firmware development or application development. Everything is integrated into one tool that supports all embedded processing configurations, from single processor to multiprocessor systems in either SMP or AMP configurations. Okay, Eric, but how is this different than software development kits available from other vendors? One key component. Embedded in SDK is SDSOC, a tool that allows software engineers to convert C, C++ applications into programmable hardware. Okay. Let's see how SDSOC does this in a generic application running on an ARM processor. Perfect. First, SDSOC runs system-level profiling. Your application is executed and code is analyzed for processor cycle usage. Here, we can determine which application functions are burning the most processing cycles. We can then select these functions and toggle them for hardware partitioning. Here's where the magic happens. Okay. When we recompile the code, SDSOC takes the C code and generates all the necessary hardware processing blocks into the programmable logic. It also automatically creates and optimizes all the connections and bit streams needed for the ARM processor to communicate with the new accelerator. So it is really hardware acceleration in C. Exactly. By accelerating in C, you no longer have to worry about coding at the hardware level. You can use programmable logic to accelerate designs directly from C or C++, saving engineering resource and allowing you to get your design to market faster. Excellent. So SDSOC can create custom accelerators out of any application function. How much performance can we really get here? That varies depending on the application, but let's take a look at a few examples. Okay. In our unmanned drone, accelerating two-camera 3D mapping on programmable logic results in about a 292x improvement in performance compared to using an ARM Cortex A53 alone. Whoa. Along the lines of image processing, adding a Sobel filter to a 1080p 60fps video is 30x faster when accelerated on a programmable logic. Okay. More recently, we implemented a binary neural network on a solitaire playing robot that speeds up image recognition by more than 1000x. What? Eric, 1000x? Are you kidding me? Crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fact is none of these functions would be possible in real time on a microprocessor without hardware acceleration. SDSOC makes the hardware acceleration process painless. That sounds fantastic. What devices are supported by SDSOC? SDSOC supports all Xilinx SOC devices. 
Okay. We built a full SOC portfolio with a wide range of processing capability on top of a unified scalable ecosystem. Cool, all right. Our Zinc 7000 SOCs come equipped with either single or dual Cortex A9 processors. Combined with 7 series programmable logic, the Zinc 7000 allows you to accelerate compute intensive tasks, providing processing performance and flexibility for cost optimized and mid range applications. Cool, okay. If you seek more processing performance, look no further than the Zinc UltraScale Plus MPSOC. Equipped with dual or quad core ARM Cortex A53s, dual Cortex R5s, and UltraScale Plus programmable logic, this device packs serious processing power. Whatever processing performance you need, we have a scalable hardware solution. Okay, what do you mean exactly by scalable? Both Zinc 7000 and Zinc Ultra Scale devices share one development platform. Okay. Meaning the software, tools, and IP are scalable across devices. So if you start a design on the Zinc 7000, but need more horsepower in a future design, you can keep the same tools and same code in a design using the Zinc UltraScale Plus. It sounds like this hardware and software scalability would be great for developing a scalable product line. Absolutely. Our portfolio can meet the processing requirements of an entire range of products while sharing the same base application code. And we're expanding our portfolio to meet the needs of future designs. Keep an eye out for our next generation programmable logic equipped SOCs. Okay. So you've got the development environment and the hardware covered. But just like with tools, an embedded designer is going to be asking about software and OS support. We've got you covered there too. We've invested and continue to invest heavily in software support. We support most common operating systems, real-time operating systems, and hypervisors, many of which run across all our different ARM processors. Whatever you need, we have it. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Looks like you've tried to make it easy for the embedded guy or girl, as the case may be. That's what we mean by breaking performance barriers. By integrating programmable logic with ARM processors, we break hardware performance bottlenecks. Xilinx SDK and SDSOC give programmable logic a C, C++ user interface, removing any software roadblocks related to hardware acceleration. And with a full portfolio of SOCs, we have the perfect fit for any application breaking performance barriers no matter what your processing requirements are. To learn more about our embedded solutions, visit www.xilinx.com SOC. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Eric. Thank you for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about embedded solutions from Xilinx. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to YouTube, keyword EE Journal, or check out the on-demand section of eejournal.com. 